The following is a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports. It's time for Pear Governor Basketball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Pear Governor Basketball is brought to you in part by Rising Hope Counseling, Bank West, Fisher Rounds, Bill Leonardo, AGE, Capital City, Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota, and Envirotech. Back out for Barry. How about another one for Barry? You Jeez, betcha! Please. You betcha! Three threes in the corner for Ryan Barry. She's got 23 tonight. And by American Family Insurance, Brittany Shufflebine Agency, River Bottom Sanitation, CHS River Plains, Wheelhouse Auto Body, Edward Jones Financial, and Allied Plumbing and Heating. And that pass is stolen away. Here is Keedles wide open. Whitfield slam for Lincoln Keedles. And a timeout taken by Coach Wilhelm. Here, Governor Basketball is also brought to you by Ferning Electric, Gales Gas, First Dakota National Bank, Faith Lutheran, Lamb Motors, James Pharmacy, and B&B Equipment. Tipped out to Williger gets the rebound. They will foul her one more time. With 9.2 to go. And just listen to him. And what an atmosphere it was tonight here at Rick Science. And by Owyhee Federal Credit Union. Anderson Rumsa Dental. Todd's Electric. Graham Tire. Avera. And the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General Division of Consumer Protection. And now with the call, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good evening as we welcome you from Rank High School as the Pier Governors take on the Lincoln Patriots this evening as the Govs get back to action here in 2024 at four and two. The Lincoln Patriots coming in at four and two. Joining me is Bennett Dean tonight. And Bennett, we, we talked a little bit about this before we got on the air and, and this the athleticism between these two teams going to be coming to play tonight. We're, we're in for a good matchup this evening. Oh yeah, we definitely are, John. Um, you know, with the Pier Governors, obviously we see a lot of these kids out on the football field. You know, the seven-time defending state champions. But for the Lincoln Patriots, too, they're coming off the state football championship led by their two stud quarterback and receiver combo in Tate Schaefer, Isaac Jarofsky, and Jack Smith. So, like you said, John, we will see a very athletic matchup tonight. The Governors are coming in after their win, uh, 78 points over the 78-74, uh, to 74, 73 against the Bismarck Demons this past Saturday. And this Governor team... If they can shoot the ball well, they can hang with anybody, and that's going to be no different tonight. If you shoot the ball well, you're going to be able to compete with the Lincoln Patriots. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I remember my senior year, all these kids now playing were freshmen and eighth graders, and I remember this Lincoln team, this current Lincoln varsity team came in here when they were only freshmen, and they shot the lights out of the gym. So you're exactly right. If if the Govs can keep up with Lincoln shooting tonight, they should have a shot to win this one. Well, the Govs do have three guys averaging 10-plus points, or two guys averaging 10-plus points. Jed Zabel at 15.2. Luke Olsen at 14 and a half points per game. And those two guys got the job done with four different double digit scorers on Saturday. And that's something that this governor team wants to do. Not one guy is going to carry the low scoring. They've got to all contribute as well. You're, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, like you said, this 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 Govs team starts with the with the duo of Jed Zabel and Luke Olson. I mean, those two guys have been kind of the ones to, you know, mo your two leading scorers mostly every game, but they've also been kind of the the engine that makes this governorship run. Well, for the governors too, they 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 get a chance, had a chance to see Jefferson play this Lincoln team, not in person but on film. They get to see them play Jefferson. They lost to him and then turned around 11 days later and beat Jefferson. So, as a former basketball guy, a former guy that watched a lot of film too, is it kind of nice to see a team? Maybe you get to see them twice on film and say, hey, they didn't win this game. Now we got to see what they did better in this game. Does that kind of help a little bit when you're scouting? Oh, that most definitely helps. I mean, when you're when you're scouting an opponent, I mean, you know how it is in basketball. It's very hard to beat a team multiple times throughout a season. And just kind of seeing what I'm sure the Govs didn't practice was they probably broke down what Lincoln maybe didn't do so well against Jefferson, maybe what they did well or did do very well, so they can try and stop that and see what they can do to try and, you know, limit this Lincoln Patriots offense. Well, the Pier Governors and the Lincoln Patriots coming up here from Rex High School. We will step aside for three minutes, come back and talk with Coach Brianna Kuser of the Pure Governor basketball team. We'll return in three minutes here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. We all want to be happy, but sometimes that doesn't feel possible. 
But if you have hope, you have everything. Rising Hope Counseling provides high quality mental health services with locations across South Dakota. Additionally, by providing telehealth, we ensure South Dakota's rural residents have access to high quality mental health services. Our team lives and works in your communities and we understand the unique challenges we face. Schedule an appointment by phone or online today. Rising Hope Counseling, offering hope, healing, and change. We might not be the largest repair shop in town, but we take pride in what we do. We want to make the experience as painless as possible for you, so we will work with your insurance company on your claim from beginning to the end. Locally owned with 50 years combined in the shop, Wheelhouse Auto Body will take the stress off of you. Wheelhouse Auto Body at 720 North Garfield or contact them at 605 494-0436-605-494-0436 or wheelhouseautobody at gmail.com. This winter, sip on a delicious hot cocoa and lose yourself in the grace of a fresh falling snow before you smash that hot mug on the driveway and join First Dakota to bank some noise for winter sports. Stomp for block shots, holler for match ceiling takedowns, and go berserk for a perfect dismount. Let's give the home team all we've got. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. River Bottom Sanitation, your locally owned waste management company serving the Pier and Fort Pier communities. Contact River Bottom Sanitation for your residential and commercial pickups. Now River Bottom Sanitation is your source for all your roll-off needs. River Bottom Sanitation and Pier and Fort Pier. Give them a call for pricing at 605-222-1120. River Bottom Sanitation, that's 605-222-1120. With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back, the sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company assigned its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebind Agency, LLC. 224-6627. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, lammotor.com. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Todd's Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones, member SIPC. As we welcome back to the pregame show here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports, join me as Coach Brianna Kusler as the Govs take on the Lincoln Patriots. And Coach, coming off a, a win on Saturday over Bismarck, scored nearly 80 points. What, what's the biggest takeaway from that win against Bismarck? It was a very collective effort. It took every single person. Uh, you know, Bismarck plays a very up-tempo game. They are in your face from whether you, you make it or miss it or they make it or miss it. doesn't matter. They are they are in your face. Um, so I felt like, you know, there were a lot of positive things that came out of it, obviously. You know, we, uh, anything, any anytime you can get a win like that, um, especially against a team that's going to pressure you, you, you like things. Um, you can take good 
things away from it. But, you know, I think one of the biggest things was the tempo that we were able to play with from from the pressure that they applied. And we had talked previously uh, it, leading up to that game about what we wanted to start doing offensively. You know, when we go to Watertown and we score 40 points, we that's not going to cut it um, in double-A basketball. You need to score more points than that. Um, and, and how we can do that and kind of looking to get a little bit more early offense in and, and being prepared to shoot earlier on and using our athleticism and our speed to, to stretch the floor a little bit and, and get some good opportunities maybe earlier in the shot clock. We're not forcing things and we're not settling for things, but maybe looking for rhythm looks a little bit sooner than what we had been. And, um, you know, the pressure that they applied up in Bismarck somewhat forced us to have to do that. But we talked afterward, we don't need the pressure that they were applying to to dictate that for us. We can be the ones dictating that. And I think um, overall that was a, a really big positive, but then just it was a, a, a grind for them to get that win. And I think um, that was very positive positive coming into this big stretch of games that we have here. Well, this Lincoln Patriots team, they're four and two. Uh, you might maybe have an advantage on film a little bit because they played Jefferson and then 11 days later, they played them again. They lost the first time and won the second time. So is that kind of nice to see what they were able to do better? Is that kind of give a little bit of advantage to you guys going into this game? Yeah, you know, I and it's nice right now. We're to the point where we've got good film on everybody. Everybody kind of has film on everybody. So you know it's going to be um, a, a well-scouted game. Um, and we were also at a point where we had a few days of practice um, and not coming off of Christmas break. It was good, solid practice before we got into it, school resuming and stuff. So um, I, I think that it'll be, again, a, a good grind. Uh, we're in the middle. Um, we're, we're starting to hit the middle of the season right here where everybody's kind of starting to find their stride, and that's certainly true um, for the Lincoln team. They're they're playing better than what they maybe did earlier on in the season, um, and we're going to have to do our job defensively and and follow the the game plan that we have in place and adjust as we need to as well. So what's the, what's one of the things that Lincoln brings that uh, it, it doesn't scare you, but what's their biggest uh, their, their threat? They they can get really really hot from the perimeter, um, and they certainly they don't live and die at the perimeter because they're they're capable of scoring in other ways, but they like it. And if they if they are hot, um, they they will knock down shots right in your face. So we've got to make sure, you know, they uh, a positive thing that we can take away from who we played on Saturday is this Lincoln team resembles them quite a bit. Now they're not going to apply pressure on on misses as much as what Besmark did, but um, they they will full court press um, and trap in the in the full court and half court on makes and dead balls. So we've got to be prepared for that pressure. Um, and then they'll they'll they like to penetrate and kick and we've got to make sure that we're containing our guys and then not over committing to to the help so we can be out on the perimeter for those knockdown shots as well. Uh, what's going to be the biggest reason here for the governors to get a win tonight? You know, limiting, like I said, those those rhythm looks that they're getting, uh, making sure we've got a high hand, running them off the line, but then not just giving them direct lanes of attack. And then when we do force tough shots, um, we're, we're looking at forcing contested twos, not just wide open jumpers, but we want them to be contested. And then clearing the glass and looking, like I said, that tempo that we're, we're looking to push um, or look to, looking to play with is something that we really feel like we want to be the, the ones that are dictating that. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. As always, good luck tonight. Thank you. Back with the pregame show next here in three minutes on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. A job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road. If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. 
Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through the extreme seasons we've grown to love. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. Their ASC certified mechanics can make your AC cool again, or even just change your oil. They can look into and fix those noises that seem to come from nowhere and have you stressed out. Bring your car to Graham Tire so they can put your mind at ease. Graham Tire, your tire store next door. We can look back at the game and see how we came to our position. This is Pastor Sam from Faith Lutheran Church. We can also look back at our lives and see how we got to where we are today. If you're in a tough spot or if things are going great, I encourage you to try this approach. Call a timeout. Get some advice from the best possible coach, from your loving God. Join us at Faith Lutheran Church for worship, where you'll hear God's plan for the game. We're Faith Lutheran and we are glad you're here. Wondering what to do with the pitted and rutted drive? B&B Equipment will get you covered. Wanting to put something down the ground? B&B Equipment will put a hole in your project. Need to even up that property? B&B Equipment can fill that need. B&B Equipment can deliver all your gravel and material needs. B&B Equipment is here for all your excavation needs. Contact B&B Equipment, 224-6727. A contractor here for you. That's B&B Equipment, 224-6727. Ah, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Whoa, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, slide, slide! College! Slide! Slide! Class of 1995! When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Now is the time to purchase your new Ford from Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota and Pier. With 0% financing available on the Ford Edge, $1,000 Ford to Ford trade-in assistance, $2,000 off all Ford F-150s with 90 days of the first payment. Stop in today or shop our extensive inventory from home at CapitalCityFordToyota.com. Count on us for your service needs, also with convenient scheduling and in-stock parts. Buy your Ford today from Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota, 518 East Sioux Ave, Pier, South Dakota. Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner, they will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. As we welcome you back here to Rick Science School, John Winkler alongside Bennett Dean here this evening as the Govs and Patriots get set for a big matchup here at Rick Science School. And Bennett, you and I, get, we talked about the, before the first break, a lot of athletes on this team. And for both these teams, they, they're coming off state tournament appearances. But when you look at on paper coming back from last year's team, that it probably was the Lincoln Patriots who felt that they were they were ready to make a run again. Well, the Governors, not that they weren't ready to make a run, but out of the two teams, you probably thought, well, the Lincoln Patriots, they're reloaded, they're ready to go again. And they, they've kind of come out strong, although they did lose to Jefferson, uh, but came back and beat him. This is a good team. Oh, you're exactly right, John. I mean, going back to, like you said earlier, I mean, both teams coming off a state tournament appearance a year ago. And like you said, the Lincoln Patriots, after last state tournament, probably thought going into this season, they're probably the, they were probably the favorite on paper. I mean, you return Schaefer, and let's not forget, they would have returned JT Rock if he had not enrolled early and uh, went to Iowa State a year early. So, like you said, they were they were probably the favorite on paper coming into the year until Rock decided to reclassify. And, and how what, what does that do? I mean, obviously, it's hard to, to say you know without experiencing it. But what what does that do for a team's identity when you have a guy that you're expected to come back because he's not graduated yet, and then the, and then all of a sudden he goes, he doesn't even transfer to other school. He just goes to college. What does that do for a team? I mean, that's a huge loss for Lincoln. I mean, Rock, you just don't see many seven-footers in South Dakota ever. I mean, there would have been not many people in AA basketball that would have been able to match up with him height-wise and probably physical-wise, too, because he was he was probably, what, 7'1", about 230, 240. Like, there just isn't that many dudes 
in double-A basketball that can match up with him physically. And with his height advantage, like his ability to block shots, he had been able to stretch the floor a little bit. Like, that's just a huge loss because I think he was, if I'm not mistaken, he was the uh, double-A player of the year last year, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So, yeah, that, that it is a big loss. But as Lincoln has shown, that they've been able to win a couple games with their four and two so far. And they do have some size, a, a six foot, six six and a six five guy on their team that, that shows that Again, the, the, they have the opportunity when you're in Sioux Falls, get 100, you know, 300,000 people in Sioux Falls, that you're, you're going to have some big kids on your team regardless. Exactly. I mean, like you said, losing Rock is definitely a huge loss, but Lincoln looks like they've they've uh, s replaced that pretty well with the 6'5 and a couple 6'6 six, six kids. Now, on the other side of it for the Pure Governors, when you have guys uh, that, that don't necessarily match up to the 6'6 six, six frame, but you do have Cooper Twilliger at 6'5, uh, Jet Sable at 6'5. Obviously, Jets get the starting lineup, and he's going to be a guy that you're always expecting to kind of be that down low presence. But other guys are on the perimeter. When you have the a, a taller team overall, th those guys in the perimeter, like Luke Olson, who stands at 5'11", he's going to be bigger than 5'11", probably tonight. Oh, exactly. You're exactly right. I mean, tonight, a key matchup or a key thing the Gubs must do is they must defend the perimeter. I mean, with, like you said, Pierre doesn't have a ton of size on the inside other than Jet and Terwilliger. So if they want to keep, you obviously want to keep those guys out of foul trouble. So the guards really need to defend on the perimeter so they can limit those driving opportunities and kind of limit the fouls that Jet and Cooper pick up. Well, the Pierre Governors are looking for their fifth win of the season. They, they start a stretch here. They'll play today, Saturday, and then next Tuesday with both those games, uh, Saturday and Tuesday, on the road. And that big matchup against the Winter Warriors, which will be a lot of seed points up for grabs. We, we, I mean, we're only, Winter's only five games in, but we know that's going to be a big seed point matchup. Obviously, not worried about that right now, but the Governors are going to be taking on this Lincoln Patriots team, which will have another lot of seed points up for grabs here tonight. So the Governors and Lincoln Patriots coming up here from Riggs High School will return in three minutes. And we've got the starting lineups. We've got the opening tip. It's Pure Governor Basketball. It's coming up next here on KCC and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gales Gas at 224-5518. That's Gales Gas at 224-5518. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Oahe Federal Credit Union. When you're looking for quality trash pickup services, look no further than Envirotech. Six days a week, their trucks are on the road picking up trash, even holidays. They're also the place to contact for recycling services. Their friendly, professional staff is ready to assist with weekly pickups or even special pickups. Check out the website at envirotechwaste.com. Envirotech is locally operated. Call 224-4804. Envirotech Waste Services in Pier. Proud to support high school athletics. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds & Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fisher Rounds & Associates. At your service, at your side. With offices in Pierre, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. Verting Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Verting Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Verting Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Verting Electric, 224-8684. 
At Anderson Rumsa Dental, we want to change the way your family views the dentist. Let us replace your dread of the chair with personal service in a friendly and inviting atmosphere. Using state-of-the-art technology, we offer porcelain crowns completed in one day, saving you time and money. Anderson Rumsa Dental, located at 1521 North Harrison Avenue in Pier. Experience dental procedures performed while you're in a deeply relaxed state, often with no recollection of the time past. Anderson Rumsa Dental. Call us today at 605-224-6111. That's 605-224-6111. As we welcome you back here, we are getting set to, for tip-off between the Pier Governors and the Lincoln Patriots as we go through the starting lineups. First, we'll go for the Lincoln Patriots, the visitors on the scoreboard here in tonight's contest. It'll be number one, Edison Knoll, the six-foot junior guard. Number three, Tate Schaefer, the six-one senior guard. Very good football player. Also, number 11, Jack Smith, another good football player, 6'1", senior guard. I believe they're also pretty good baseball players, too, Bennett. Yes, they are very good baseball players. Uh, it is also going to be number 23, Braxton Moore, the 6'4", senior forward, and number 41, Gary Crow, the 6'6", senior center for the Lincoln Patriots. For the Pier Governors, they've got some pretty good football and baseball players on their team as well. We start Luke Olson, wearing number one, the 5'11", junior guard, number two, Ty and Buss, the 5'10", senior guard, number three, Jet Zay with a 6'5", senior forward, as well as number five, Kate Kaiser, the 6'2", senior guard, and number 10, Doss against the 6'3", junior guard. So for the Lincoln Patriots, it is Noel, Schaefer, Smith, Moore, and Crow. And for the Pier Governors, it is Olsen, Buss, Zabel, Kaiser, and Getz. As the Governors wear their black jerseys here tonight, and in blackout nights, everybody in the student section wearing black. Everybody's wearing black. Mostly everybody's wearing black. You've got the black on too, Bennett. You, you got the, I got the gray and the black going. Oh, so you got a little bit black in your t-shirt there, so. I, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I, I mean, I was in, my mom was like, you should wear something pure. And obviously, uh, being out of high school for the past couple years, I don't have a ton of governor stuff that fits me anymore. But I decided to just wear a plain black hoodie. And luckily, I ended up matching tonight with the crowd. There you go. You, you had it. You, you could have just told me that you had it all in mind, all in favor of uh, the, the blackouts here at uh, at Riggs High School. But we're ready to go. It will be Crow against Kaiser in the opening tip. And again, Gary Crow stands at 6'6". Kate Kaiser standing at 6'2". Obviously the height advantage for Gary Crow, but opening tip, ready to go. Eight minutes are on the clock. Riggs High School on a Thursday night. Pure Governors to the Lincoln Patriots. Governors from right to left. The Patriots from left to right. Kaiser with the opening tip. We're underway on this Thursday night, says Ty and Buss. Will work into the left side of the floor, passes it right side for Olsen. Now Kaiser in the right wing. He looks inside, kicks it out top for Dawson Getz. He'll start to drive, kick it for Buss. He'll drive baseline into the corner, goes for Zabel. 18 to go on the shot clock. Olsen left wing into the corner, got gets for three, buries the triple. And the Governors get an early look at an early bucket from Dawson Getz to get us going. I mean, that was a nice play by Olsen. A little pass fake into the Getz three. On the right side, it is Schaefer that will hand off. Moore comes back to him on the right wing. Made a man defense turnover as Zabel will take the interception. He'll drive down. He puts up the shot with contact, missed it with the rebounds, grabbed by Kaiser. He'll kick it back out for Zabel in the corner. Now it's left side for Luke Olson. Early turnover by the Patriots. Gets for another three. That one's offline. Weak side rebound by Zabel as he's pushed out of bounds. He's able to keep it in play. Then Buss will turn the ball over as that one's stolen away. Up ahead for Crow, who can't get the shot to fall. The Governors will get the rebound. And back away we go the other way. That was good transition defense there by Buss. I mean, hustling back after the turnover and forcing a miss. Olsen will catch on the right wing. 6.43 to go in the first quarter. Yes, how about another three? His third triple already. He's one for three. Rebound will be fought for and a foul committed by Jed Zabel in our first one of the day against the Governors. You know, I like the, aggressive with the, the aggressiveness that Dawson gets to showing early. I mean, obviously a great shooter. Not, a, not afraid to let the thing fly, but that's a real nice job by Getz, you know, trying to get the crowd into it a little bit and uh, get this Govs team going. Boy, a little, almost was heat check for Dawson Getz in the first 30 seconds of the ball game. As it's on the right wing, there's a three up for the Patriots. That one is missed offline by Tate Schaefer, and the rebound is grabbed again by the Governors. 
Luke Olson on the left wing here for Pierre. He'll work it back out top, right side for Buss. He'll jab step, drive in, kick it left side for Kaiser. And then Kaiser will travel and turn the ball back over to the Patriots with 6-11 to go in the first quarter. Second turnover by the Governors. You know, going back to that, uh, the Schaefer three in the last possession, that's a guy that the Govs are really going to need to key on defensively tonight. Schaefer is an absolutely great shooter. I remember in last year's game, he hit, I believe, like four or five threes in a row. So they're really going to need to key in, uh, key in on him tonight. You're listening to KCCR Perry Riverfront Broadcasting Station. Crow will catch underneath. He was underneath the basket and missed the shot. Good defense by the Governors as Getson Zabel didn't see him come behind him, but he did miss the shot anyway. Olsen will drive with the right hand left side and the finger roll misses. And Crow grabs a rebound, but then tipped away by Olsen. Regathered by Crow and a hard baseball pass across court to set the offense up for the Lincoln Patriots. Schaefer off the pick and roll. There's a three up by Crow, and Gary Crow knocks down the triple to tie the game up three to three with five and a half to go in the first quarter. Quick press beaten by the Governors. Kate Kaiser will drive. His shot rejected by Crow, and it's going to be picked up by Smith by Moore. Moore will drive, kicks it over. Here's Crow, another three. That one's too strong. The rebound's grabbed by Getz. And a frantic pace in the first couple minutes of this game. And a lot of threes thrown up and only made one from each side. You know, the one thing the Govs have already need to, I think the Govs need to show is they need to really slow this game down. Lincoln so far looks like they really want to get up in you, you know, push the tempo a little bit. I believe the Govs can slow things down offensively and, you know, run some offense. They should have a good night. Olsen was partially pushed to the back. Now Olsen will catch for three. That one's offline. Weak side rebound will come to Moore, and he'll throw it up ahead for Schaefer. Schaefer will stop on the right wing, kick it back out top, and it's taken back by Braxton Moore. Governors will get their first sub coming in here. So your sun shines at the bench or at the top here. Now we get a time called, and we've got maybe blood. Kate Kaiser, the referee stops play with 4.36 to go. So your sun and shine will check in. Maybe got poked in the, inadvertently poked in the eye. Seems to be okay as Bus will take a seat. So usually for a blood timeout, they have to they have to come off the court, don't they? Yeah, I was going to say that. So I, I was. It's odd to see the referee stop time and allow Kaiser to stay in the ball game, but there's still 50 in the shot clock as the inbound is caught by the Patriots. Now it's Smith at the top of the key. Smith will leave it at the free throw line. Losing the ball was Noel, and now it's Kaiser up ahead with the bad eye. Missed the layup, though. The rebound's grabbed by the Patriots. Early poor shooting by both these teams. Crow underneath. His foot was almost out of bounds. He was able to get a little bit of separation, but he missed the shot. Zabel will sky for the rebound. Crow leading on him and will get called for the foul with 4-1 to go. Gary Crow picks up his first foul, the first team foul for the Patriots. You know, what an excellent defensive possession there from the Govs these last few possessions. I mean, they've been really getting up into these Lincoln Patriots and, you know, making Lincoln have some tough decisions to make. I mean, it's never easy when defense is up on you and you got to make some tough decisions, but nice defensive effort by the Govs so far. And now we get a chance to maybe slow things down a little bit. Luke Olson across the timeline here for the Governors. Right elbow for Jed Zabel. He'll drive left side, got to the basket, and leads it off the glass. Zabel's on the score sheet, his first bucket, 5-3 lead for the Governors. You know, great take by Zabel there. You know, a little ball fake, a little show of the ball fake, and got right to the left hand, which, he's, which is his dominant hand. Schaefer gets two different screens. Moore rolled off it, got the pass, and his skip pass was tipped, although grabbed by Jack Smith. His shot missed, but the rebound by Crow, the putback is missed. Gary Crow made the three, but he's he's taken most of the shots. He's cold for the floor. Olsen will drive all the way to the bucket, try to lay it high off the glass, and that one's too strong, and the rebound's grabbed again by the Patriots. And then there's a drive. We're going to blocking foul against Sawyer Sunshine. Just wasn't set as driving in was S. Noel. I'll say, like you said, John, Sunshine, great defensive effort getting back, but unfortunately wasn't set and picked up the blocking foul for his first. And we've got uh, six new players coming in. Cooper Twilliger, Ty and Buss, and Miles Doyle will check in for the Governors. We've got uh, Isaac Dravosky, as well as also, let's see here, we also have uh, uh, Dan DeGroot, uh, Dan DeGroot, and as well as number five, Sam Erickson. As the inbound pass will come for more with 315, 310 remaining here in the first quarter. It is Erickson at the top of the key. Man-to-man -man defense still for the Governors. DeGroote will take a three. That one's too strong, and the rebound will be grabbed by the Patriots, but we get a tie-up and a whistle that will be in favor of the Patriots and the loose ball as it 
Jarofsky got the rebound and the tie-up for the jump ball. I say that was a little poor miscommunication there by the Govs. Looked like a little miscommunication error, not closing out on the shooter. Now it's going to be Jarofsky that started to drive, kicks it back out. There's a three up and buried by Tate Schaefer. And that's a 6-5 lead for the Patriots. They've just made two field goals. Both teams have made just two shots, but it is a one-point lead for the Patriots. Doyle underneath the basket, gets it back for Zabel, gets in the paint. The ball, there's a tie-up. It'll be a jump ball. Zabel got the shot up, but it was grabbed by Moore at the same time, so we get a tie-up, and it stays with the Governors. So that's, a, that's a break for Pierre. Oh, that's a huge break for Pierre. I mean, looked like the looked like Jet was trying to go up for a shot there, and luckily... Luckily, Jet was able to hold on to the ball enough for, uh, for a jump ball to be called. Olsen will inbound at the top for Cooper Twilliger. Takes one dribble, hands it back off for Olsen. Thought about a three, now he'll drive in, kick it to the left side for Buss. Steps back, pulls up for a three. That's too strong, and the rebound's going to be grabbed by the Patriots and Erickson. And so Lincoln back the other way with a 6-5 advantage of the American Family Insurance. Brittany shuffle by scoreboard. Step back for Schaefer for three. He's got back-to-back -back threes made in a 9-5 lead. Three threes in the ballgame so far for the Lincoln Patriots. And that's the one thing you don't want to see for the Gov if you're a Govs fan is you do not want to see Tate Schaefer start to heat up from behind the arc. Luke Olsen across midcourt. Hard pass to Zabel. Baseline jumper is good. Unconventional, especially this day and age in basketball, but it is a jumper for Jed Zabel, and it's a 9-7 score. You know, John, I've been really impressed so far with Luke Olsen's ability to get into the lane. I mean, when as a basketball player, one of the things you're taught defensively is to is to not let the ball handler or the ball, the guy who's handling the ball, get to the middle of the lane. And with Luke being able to do that so consistently, it's opened up a lot of good shots for the Govs. Good defense by the Governors, forcing a Tate Schaefer miss. I think the Patriots just need to stick to shooting outside shots. They haven't made anything inside the arc yet with 124 to go in the first quarter. It is now Zabel that will drive for Doyle for three. That one's missed. And the rebound, though, it was to Williger that grabbed it and a foul committed by the Patriots. Good job by the freshman with 117 to go. Third team foul by the Patriots. Make that the second team foul by the Patriots. I mean, that's just so hard to believe. I mean, you don't see many freshmen built like Cooper Twilliger at about 6'5 and about 215 pounds as a freshman. Yeah, you don't see too many guys that are 14, 15 years old. They look like they're 20. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is going to be Dawson Getz that will inbound here for the Governors. Doyle has to come out of the ball game. The governors are trying to, to get a 6-on-5 advantage. was not going to work out. So with 117 to go, fresh 35 here, inbound for Twilliger. Throws it for Ty and Buss at the top of the key. Right side, gets his open NBA range three, but the shot was blocked from beyond the arc, and then it was thrown off the legs of Getz as it was grabbed by Erickson, and wisely in the corner threw it off of Getz to go out of bounds to get the possession back for the Patriots. You know, good defensive effort there by the Patriots, closing out on the shooter and Getz, and forced Getz to take a really tough shot from very deep. Still a 9-7 lead for Lincoln here with one minute to go now in the first quarter. It is Schaefer that will drive right side, kick it for Erickson as he stepped back into the corner. He'll now throw it right wing as DeGroote will throw it back to the top of the key. Driving, there's a foul committed by Buss who's trying to get all ball, but instead fouls Isaac Jarofsky and to the free throw line will be Jarofsky. No, I thought that was pretty good defense, defensive effort there by Buss. Just, you know, happened to clip, clip Jarofsky in the arm as he was going up. So it'll be the first free throws with 49 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And the first chance for the Patriots to score inside the three-point arc, and they still can't. The free throws missed by Jarofsky. It's, it'll be Jack Smith to check back in. It also feels like the first actual break in the game. There hasn't been, doesn't seem like there's been too many of those. It's been really up and down so far. We have not had too many chances to breathe here this first quarter. As the second free throw for Jarowski, that's also missed. The rebound will be grabbed by Kaiser. So 0 for 2 for the free throw line. 0 for everything inside the arc right now for the Lincoln Patriots. 38 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is Twilliger, right side for Getz. Gets a screen, steps back, pulls up for three. That one's too strong, and the rebound will be grabbed by the Patriots. Shot clock turned off, and they can hold for the funnel shot here in the first quarter. It is DeGroote that will hand off on the left side. Make that Jarofsky that hand off the left side for Noel. Out top, Sam Erickson. They'll give it back over for Jarofsky. Now the right wing 
Make that Jarofsky, that will get it from Smith. Now Smith back, four seconds to go inside the arc, but a foul before the shot that actually went in, but it was before the shot. It is the fourth team foul by the governor, so that no free throws as it'll be the second foul on Ty and Buss. And with 3.1 to go, Buss, or make that 3.5 to go, Buss will come out of the ball game with Sawyer Sunshine checking in and one final shot up coming here for the Patriots. So they look to be a hand check foul there from Buss, but that's a big that's a big foul. I mean, Buss has already got two now. So Erickson's I, shot is blocked, is now gets, can't get away at the buzzer. So we will head to the end of the first quarter. It's a 9-7 lead with the Patriots making only three shots, all from beyond the arc. We've had an up and down game, but no team broke double digits in the first quarter. It's been a wild one so far in this first quarter. We'll, we'll step aside for a minute, come back with the second quarter. You listen to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. We all have had to fix little. We all have had to fix little things. Loose screw, get a screwdriver. Nail coming up, find a hammer. Bolt coming loose, get some wrenches. Sometimes these little things tend to make us think we can fix big things. Plug drain, call Allied Plumbing. Water heater leaking, call Allied Plumbing. Sewer backed up? Trust me, leave it to the professionals and rely on your ally. Call Allied Plumbing. With 75 years of combined experience, it speaks for itself. Allied Plumbing, 494-2001. South Dakotans, due to the recent flood, hail, and windstorms, many of you have damage and are in need of making repairs. When it comes to making the decision of who to hire to complete the repairs, you should always check with the Department of Revenue to ensure they're licensed to do business in South Dakota. And you should check with Consumer Protection to see if any complaints have been filed against the company. And finally, never sign anything until you read all the details. Rule of thumb, when someone knocks on your door to sell you a product or service, they need to provide you with a three-day right to cancel. Go to ConsumerSD.gov and look under Transient Vendors or call 800 300 one nine eight six. Start of the second quarter. Pure Governors down nine to seven on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shuffle by scoreboard. We'll get Bennett's thoughts here in just a moment as we welcome you back in the start of the second quarter. Tate Schaefer has it for the Lincoln Patriots. On the right side, Braxton Moore back over left wing for Schaefer. Cuts it back out top as Moore starts to drive. Lost the balance. That's going to be a travel. It is a turnover against the Patriots. Just the third turnover from Lincoln. Two in the first quarter for the Governors. And, and Bennett it's 9-7 right now, but the way these two teams play, the way they way it fell, it looked like it should be like 29-27. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, I remember, I think I texted you earlier today that I thought this game was going to be a barn burner, and it's kind of looking that way so far. The governors turned it over in the backcourts after they had inbounded it. It's now going to be wide open. Jack Smith, they left him open. Might have done so for a reason. He airballed the three. Too wide open for Jack Smith. So it will be now on the right side. Gets he'll pull up for three. That one's missed as well. Gets made the first three, and the governor's lid has fallen shut on the three-point line. On the other side, the Lincoln Patriots haven't made a shot underneath the inside the arc, and now they'll go back to the free throw line, where a foul committed by the governors will send Edison Knoll to the line. You know, the one thing I've noticed so far is I've really liked the shots Dawson Getz has taken so far. You know, other than that first one falling, none of them have fell, but, you know, all of them seem to be in rhythm. It's just the lid, there's a lid on the basket right now for the governors. First free throw will be in for Edison Knoll, and that's the first free throw made by the Lincoln Patriots in the ball game, as they're now one for three in the first shot inside the arc that they've made in this game. The second free throw is also good, and it's now 11 to seven, with 7:15 left to go here in the for in the first half. Olson is pinned to the corner. He'll throw it all the way down for Twilliger. Good baseball pass from Luke Olson. So the Govs down by four. Olsen will have it back and top the key here for the Governors. Gets two screens, drives all the way in, kicks it for Getz. How about another three? That one finally falls through for Dawson Getz. He needed that one to go. Get the confidence back up, and the Governors pull within one. You know, once again, John, Luke Olsen getting to the middle of the lane for a kick out for three. That's just something that if the Lincoln Patriots really want to win this game, that's something that they must do to try and stop. It is Smith in the right wing in the corner. Back out for Schaefer. He tries a jab step, drive on Guest, kicks it back over. Noel pulls up for a three. That rattles in and out, and the rebound's grabbed by Jet Zabel. Kaiser, one hand pass for Guest, lobs over the top for Twilliger underneath. He got a pump fake, got the shot to fall. The Governors are back up by one. The 12 11 lead, their first one since it was 3 0. 
you know, not, nice strong move there by Twilliger. Good pass from Getz, good good entry pass. But Twilliger going up, going up against the 6-6 Crow, nice strong move to finish the layup. Now Crow goes on Twilliger, he'll turn the left side. He gets the jumper to fall five feet in. And Crow makes his first field goal since he made it 3-3 three three back in the beginning of the, the ball game. A little bit easier to score in this second quarter right now. Luke Olson, he'll start to drive left side. He'll float it with the right hand. That one with the soft touch will fall through to 14-13 lead now for the Governors. First points for Luke Olson. Luke Olson, like I'm going to keep saying probably all night, just gets to the gets to the lane. Nice, easy floater from about 10 feet. Crow missed the easy layup, missed the bunny. As Twilliger got over, Olsen got over to make a miss. Zabel got up in the air, double clutch, and makes the pass as he was trying to go real quick in transition with the jumper. Twilliger will catch with a hand draped all over him. His shot is short, and the rebound's grabbed by Crow. No, another good, another good move there by Cooper. I mean, going up strong. Looked like, looked to me from up here, John, there might have been a foul as Twilliger was kind of draped. As Twilliger will get a huge, oh no, they call foul at the end. I thought he got a huge block, but they will call a foul on Twilliger with more driving. And Twilliger will pick up his first foul. That, that Again, up here it looked clean. Maybe there's a little bit more body contact, but but a good defensive play by Twilliger. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, going, I mean, that was, I thought that was a pretty good sequence, both offensively and defensively from Cooper. I mean, you know, going up strong to me up here offensively looked like he maybe got fouled, looked like the Lincoln defender was kind of draped across his back and then going up, going up strong with a good contest just happened to foul him. So the governors have already matched their total of points in the first quarter with seven. Patriots have scored five. They had nine in the first quarter, already scored five. It's 14-14 right now with 5.02 to go in the second quarter. Much easier scoring in this second quarter, although the free throw is missed. Second free throw is missed by Moore. They're three for four in the quarter, and now three for six in the ball game. And a 14-14 tie on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Shuffle by the scoreboard. Zabel will catch to the left wing here for the Governors. Kicks it back out for Luke Olson. Olson thought about a pass on the right side. Now he got a screen from Zabel. Couldn't do anything with it with the easy switch by the Patriots. Kaiser, bounce pass between two defenders. Zabel has to give it back out for Kaiser. Steps to the free throw line. The jumper just rolls off the left side. Zabel fights for the rebound, trying to go up. And we've got a foul committed by the Lincoln Patriots to the chagrin of the Patriots fans. Just to our left. And it will be Jed Zabel to go the free throw line for the governor's first free throw attempts of the ball game. I'll say that. It looked to, be, it looked to be a foul on Gary Crow there. Him and Zabel were fighting for the rebound. And... You know it. You know it could have been very much easily could have been another jump ball, but this way happened. Go the call happened to go in favor for the Govs. Zabel, the lefty's first free throw. That one rattles in and out. And we'll have Kremchis check in. Luke Kremchis will check in the six-five junior center for Crow. With his two fouls, they want to be careful with him that he doesn't pick up that third one before the end of the first half. Maybe he gets back in at some point in the second quarter. With 4.29 left in the first half, Zabel's second free throw. That one falls, and the Governors are back up by 1.15-14. And Zabel lead the team in points per game, 15.2. That's his fifth of the night. Tate Schaefer steps back. Gets got back over in time. Forced the pass. Now the pass will go underneath for Moore, who sealed off Olsen, and then Olsen will foul. And Moore will go to the free throw line. Moore was able to seal off Olsen in time and, and got himself with between, and Olsen was behind Moore between him and the basket. So they didn't get a chance to get over and Olsen to pick up his second foul. I'll say that was really nice play there uh, by Moore, I believe it is. But nice play by Moore. I mean, having the smaller Olsen on your back, nice seal. And that's that's a big foul because that's Luke Olsen's second. So your two starting guards for the Govs both have two fouls. So they got to be careful because you don't you probably don't see Olsen and bust for the rest of the half so the govs the govs guards really need to step it up so they can kind of keep themselves out of foul trouble yeah Olsen and bust now on the bench as it was i believe kate kaiser that checked in for luke Olsen. first free throw was missed second free throw is going to be waved off it's a lane violation by the patriots so he goes 0 for 2 as well and it's a still 15 14 lead for the governors with 4 10 remaining here in the first half Kaiser will inbound here for Zabel. A baseball pass up ahead for Getz. He'll catch. He'll pull up for three. Buries it. 18-14 lead. Third three for Dawson Getz. The Governors are up by four. Largest lead tonight. 
You know, the worst thing for a defense, John, is when you start giving a shooter a little bit of confidence. That can be and will, travel? Yeah, it will be a travel. It was more that tripped and fell, and, and it took for a long time for anybody to make a call. And the referee on the far sideline decided, hey, that, that's a travel. We're going to call it. 3.51 to go. There's timeout taken by the Governors. I believe it was just a 30-second timeout. And the Governors, yeah, we'll keep it here on KCCR. Go ahead, Fish, I thought. Oh, here, yeah, I mean, that's that's the worst thing if you, you can do defensively in the game of basketball, especially in today's game, is when you start giving a shooter confidence. I mean, you see it happen all the time at the high levels of college and in the NBA. But when you give good shooters confidence, that can be a very bad thing for the defense because it now opens up so much more that you can do offensively, whether that be gets hitting another three, gets maybe with a drive, you know, dip, dish off to Zabel or a cutting guard or something. It just opens up so much more offensively that it makes it tougher for the defense to stop. Well, that that obviously the, the game situation a little bit different, but kind of took you back to probably 14 years ago or so, maybe 15 years ago, Ali Farokmanesh from Northern Iowa had a, had a lane to drive instead he'd take the three. And I, I think if you're Brandon Kusler, you'd probably say, yeah, Dawson Getz taking an open three is just as good as him taking an open layup. And, and, and even more so because you get a third point or a, an extra point out of it. I mean, that's that's the thing with all good shooters. I mean, sometimes a, an uncontested three is as good as a layup. I mean, look at guys like Steph Curry, J.J. Redick, like, their career 40% three-point shooters, and those open threes are just about as good as a layup. The Governors turned the ball over at the timeout. It was a long pass down the floor trying to get to gets at the midcourt line and end up overthrowing it, so the Governors turn it over for the fourth time in the ball game. There's a drive. There's a charge against Tate Schaefer. Third turnover of the quarter by the Lincoln Patriots, and Tate Schaefer will pick up his first foul. You know, John, when I when they first called that foul, I thought it might have been a might have been a foul on Getz for going up for the block, but luckily this another call goes in favor of the Govs. Sudden shine will pass it for Zabel now to a cutting Doyle who lays it in. And the governors take a six-point lead. Miles Doyle on the score sheet in the second quarter. You know, maybe that's something Lincoln goes out of to try and try and get some stops defensively. You know, the Govs have had pretty relative ease. That three rattles around and falls through for Sam Erickson. The Gulls have had pretty relative ease so far in the second quarter of breaking this this Lincoln pressure. So maybe if you're Lincoln and your coach Hall Seth, you maybe try and get out of that for a little bit, maybe a possession or two, and you know try and get try and get back defensively and try and get a stop. Kate Kaiser here for the Governors, slowing things down. 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Dawson Guess will catch left side. They've got to guard him anywhere on the floor. As Zabel will start to drag, gets a little bit of separation, missed the shot, rebounds tipped around, and eventually grab by the Patriots. Up ahead it goes for Jaroski. Now into the corner, Erickson. There's a three up. That's missed by Erickson. And the rebound on the weak side, grabbed by Sawyer Sunnenshine. Miles Doyle on the left side. Into the corner it goes for Kate Kaiser. As Kaiser will work it back out to the wing. Now Dawson gets another three for Getz. That's too strong. And the rebound will be fought for one. We've got a tie-up. That will be a jump ball, and it will stay in favor of the Pier Governors. You know, that's just a great hustle play by Sawyer Sonnenschein right there. You know, the smallest guy on the court has made two huge impactful plays on back-to-back -back possessions, just getting, getting the rebound and getting the ball back to the Govs. Tyant Buss will check in for the Governors. Cooper Twilger as well for Pier and for for Buss, he's going to be very careful here, and I think that probably was a conversation with Coach Kusler and Buss, whether Olsen goes back in or not. Those two guys probably got a little talking to. If you go back in, we do not want you to get a third foul called against you in this first half. I'll say, if, if you're Buss, especially defensively at this point, if, you're, if your dude gets by him, you might as well concede the, concede the points because you do not, like you said, John, you do not want to pick up that third foul. Buss's three was missed. It might have been partially blocked as an air ball, but Twilliger got the hand on it, trying to grab the ball, and ends up going for the Lincoln Patriots with 2.10 left to go. It was, it was a good look for Buss, but probably was partially tipped, and then Twilliger didn't notice it, and ends up going the other way for the Patriots. So you, you maybe could have gotten an over-the-back call on Twilliger fighting for that rebound, but I don't think it would have mattered either way. It looked like looked like that was going to be Lincoln Ball all the way. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. It is Erickson. He'll pull up for three to try and tie it, but missed the shot. Rattles are off the rim, and it's grabbed by Twilliger. Zabel races up the left side. He'll float it high over the top for Doyle. To reset the offense here for the Governors as Zabel will drive in. His right-handed layup is missed, but he is fouled, and he will step to the free throw line. The only Governor to go to the line, he's back for two, as that foul committed by uh, number 51, 
Krimchus will get called for the foul. And Zabel back to the line. You know, a strong take by Zabel going there with the offhand. But one thing I've noticed so far, especially defensively, what Lincoln has done is they seem to be trapping the ball anytime it gets to one, it gets to a third of the floor. You know, in the game of basketball, you split the you split the floor up into thirds. So anytime it goes to the outer thirds of the court, it looks to be like the Lincoln Patriots are trapping the Govs. So if I'm Coach Kusler, I'm in, at the halftime speech, I would maybe say try and keep the ball in the middle third as much as possible so that way we can stay out of trapping situations and potential turnovers. Zabel goes two for two on that free throw trip. 22-17, one and a half to go here in the first half as the Governors lead it by five of the American Family Insurance, Brittany Shuffle by the scoreboard. It is Crow trying to cross over Zabel, floated to, to the basket, missed the shot, but a rebound will come out. There's a wide open three for DeGroote, but he missed the shot, and the rebound's grabbed by the Governors. They had all closed out defensively, but DeGroote was left wide open on the other side of the floor, but missed the three. To Williger, takes one power dribble, shot went up, it's missed, rebounds, fought for it bounced off of Lincoln and out of bounds with 103 to go and there was a pair of six different hands it looked like almost everybody on the floor was reaching for that rebound I'll say it looked like you're like you're exactly right John it looked like a majority of the floor or the guys on the floor we should say we're trying to fight for that rebound Bus will lob a pass out, but it's going to be tipped and stolen away by Moore. And with his left hand, he'll lay it in. Securely laid it in for Braxton Moore. And the Govs have now a three-point lead as the Patriots cut that deficit with under a minute to go in the first half. Another turnover by the Governors, their fifth so far in the game. Make that their sixth now as Moore will take another pass away. So now with 40 seconds left, Schaefer pulls up for three to tie it. That was missed. Weak side rebound for Bus. Bounce pass and gives the ball right back away to the Patriots. Now it's in left hand. Turnaround shot is good for Edison Knoll to make it 22-21 with 25 seconds remaining. Zabel's going to find somebody to end the bound ball too, and it will be to Cade Kaiser, and he is fouled. Be the fourth team foul by the Patriots, and the second one on Edison Knoll made them the first one on Knoll with 23.9 to go. Gunners oh, so just need to get out of this quarter right now. Yeah, they, they definitely need to get out of this quarter, but you know, that turnover by Bus maybe wasn't the worst thing in the world because now you're basically all but guaranteed the last shot of the quarter. And and you should still have the lead going into halftime. Kaiser's going to find somebody to inbound the ball too, but they turn it over again. It's Moore with the layup to go in. Well, I take back that comment. So it, it is another turnover on the Governors who just can't find their way out of this quarter right now. Bus is fouled. He's going to go to the free throw line as Moore will pick up the foul and can't imagine that the, the, the talk of the locker room right now for the Governors is going to be a fun chat to at least start out this the, the talk in, at halftime as that's the, another foul on Noel. He'll go to the line for two for Ty and Buss who is trying to get his first points of the night. I mean, like I said earlier, John, I mean, what, what Lincoln has done this last about minute and a half, two minutes is they've really picked you up and they've really trapped you down in those, those outer thirds of the floor. I mean, if you're the Govs, you've got to keep it in the middle third of the floor. Once you get the ball in the middle third of the floor, that's where you see stuff start breaking down. You know, you get some fast break opportunities. You get easy looks for layups or, or jump shots. Here's a second one for Bus to try and tie the game up. He'll knock that one down, and the Govs have tied it up at 23. But there's only 13 seconds remaining here in the first quarter to make that the first half. Erickson for more with seven seconds to go. Now right side, Erickson pulls up for a long three. It rattles its way home. One final shot for Kaiser, and he's not going to get off in time. And the Governors will go to the locker room down 26 to 23 to the Lincoln Patriots as Moore knocked down shot after shot at the end of that. Make, make that Erickson who knocked down another three as he made two threes in that second quarter. 26-23 at the half. Governors are down by three. Will return in three minutes with halftime stats. You're listening to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. 
NGE Corporation's Contractors and Crane Services is a proud supporter of Pier Governor Athletics. For almost 60 years, AGE has been building South Dakota. For all your site work, construction, and crane work needs this season, AGE is here to help. Give them a call. AGE Corporation and Crane Service, 223-2732. That's 223-2732. AGE, proud supporters of local sports. At Agtegra, we're leveraging the power of the cooperative to benefit our farmers and ranchers, their families, and local communities. We're creating jobs for your neighbors and putting money back into our communities. We're lending a hand in our rural fire departments, food banks, and 4-H and FFA programs. That's what local is all about. When you do business at Agtegra, you help us make a difference in your community. Agtegra, strong, stable, dependable, and local. When you're in the need for high-quality replacement auto parts, look no further than Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop in Pier. Xander's has been servicing the Capital City area for over 40 years. Their professional parts techs can get you the parts you need and get you back on the road. Stop by Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop at 500 West Sioux Avenue in Pier or call 224-9221. Xander's, your locally owned independent auto parts store. 500 West Sioux in Pier. Go Govs! Dr. Nick and Chelsea Redmond at Floss Dentistry and Pier is family owned and operated. They have modern practice with skill and caring staff. They have same day availability. Floss Dentistry is located at 603 East Sioux Avenue in Pier with hours Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5. Give them a call at 605-224-2161 and don't put off that scheduled cleaning any longer. Floss Dentistry, 603 East Sioux Avenue in Pier or give Dr. Nick and Chelsea Redmond a call at 605-224-2161. We all want to be happy, but sometimes that doesn't feel possible. But if you have hope, you have everything. Rising Hope Counseling provides high quality mental health services with locations across South Dakota. Additionally, by providing telehealth, we ensure South Dakota's rural residents have access to high quality mental health services. Our team lives and works in your communities, and we understand the unique challenges we face. Schedule an appointment by phone or online today. Rising Hope Counseling, offering hope, healing, and change. As we welcome you back here to Riggs High School as it is a 26-23 lead for the Lincoln Patriots at the break. John Wickler alongside Bennett Deed. And Bennett in that first half, well, Governors, they look good in that second quarter, look much better in that second quarter, but things just kind of started to, to slip away a little bit. Uh, and, and turnovers end up with six turnovers in that quarter and about four or five of those came in the last minute or so and Lincoln ended up going from a five point deficit to a three point lead at the end of the first half. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, I kind of, for the most part, I thought the Govs kind of controlled the game the entire first half up until that last, that last minute and a half, two minutes of the second quarter. I mean, and like I've said earlier on the broadcast, what I personally think the Govs need to do to kind of break this Lincoln pressure, because as we saw in that last minute and a half, two minutes of the second quarter, Lincoln really ratcheted up that full court press. And John, you and I talked about it, but if they, if the Govs can get the ball in the middle of the floor, and I, we saw it multiple times in the second quarter when they were able to get the ball in the middle of the floor, they broke the press with relative ease and they were able to set themselves up with good shots. So if I'm Coach Kusler, Kusler like I said, or like I said earlier, I'm telling the guys to break the press, get the ball in the middle of the floor, and then we can get easy looks in transition, you know, maybe for an easy layup or an easy three-point shot. Governors, uh, they, they were down by two at the end of the first quarter. Again, had that five-point lead. They're up 22-17, end up now trailing 26-23 at the end of the first half. We go through the stats here real quick, and for the Pier Governors, uh, or excuse me, let's start with the Lincoln Patriots. They were led with six points by Tate Schaefer and Sam Erickson, who both had two threes. And Schaefer is in the first quarter. Erickson is in the second quarter. Then five points for Braxton Moore, who had all five in the second quarter. Gary Crow with five points and Edison Knoll with four points as the Lincoln Patriots made five threes, no shots inside the arc in that uh, in that first uh, in the first quarter, and so then it was a couple of threes in the second quarter, but they went three for eight from the free throw line in that first half. 
For the Pier Governors overall, they had nine points from Dawson Getz, who lead all scorers. He's got three threes in the ball game, seven from Jed Zabel, and then two points apiece for Cooper Twilger, Luke Olson, and Miles Doyle. And then Ty and Bustle with one for two for the free throw line. The Governors were three for five from the floor, uh, from the free throw line, excuse me. They turned the ball over eight times. The Lincoln Patriots turned the ball over five times in that first half. So for the Governors, Bennett, here in the second half, you kind of already mentioned a little bit. One, also Luke Olson getting, staying out of foul trouble, but staying on the floor is going to be huge, getting hit back on the floor. But what's going to be the biggest key for the Govs to get this win tonight? I just, I honestly think the biggest key for them is, besides not turning the ball over, and they did a really good job of this in the first half, but they need to limit Tate Schaefer shooting the ball. I mean, Schaefer has six points right now at the end of the first half, but I thought Dawson Getz especially played tremendous defense on Schaefer. And as we've seen so far, Schaefer's, Schaefer's a really good shooter. So if they can limit Schaefer getting in rhythm and setting his feet and getting easy looks from three, they should have a shot to win this ball, this basketball game. Governors are down by three going in the second half. We'll have the second half for you next, back in three minutes here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. We might not be the largest repair shop in town, but we take pride in what we do. We want to make the experience as painless as possible for you. So we will work with your insurance company on your claim from beginning to the end. Locally owned with 50 years combined in the shop, Wheelhouse Auto Body will take the stress off of you. Wheelhouse Auto Body at 720 North Garfield or contact them at 605-494-0436. 605-494-0436 or wheelhouseautobody at gmail.com. This winter, sip on a delicious hot cocoa and lose yourself in the grace of a fresh falling snow before you smash that hot mug on the driveway and join First Dakota to bank some noise for winter sports. Stomp for block shots, holler for match ceiling takedowns, and go berserk for a perfect dismount. Let's give the home team all we've got. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. River Bottom Sanitation, your locally owned waste management company serving the Pier and Fort Pier communities. Contact River Bottom Sanitation for your residential and commercial pickups. Now River Bottom Sanitation is your source for all your roll-off needs. River Bottom Sanitation and Pier and Fort Pier. Give them a call for pricing at 605-222-1120. River Bottom Sanitation, that's 605-222-1120. With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back. The sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, yes, its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebind Agency, LLC. 224-6627. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, lammotor.com. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Tons Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Tons Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Tons Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Tons Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. As we welcome you back here, Pure Governors, they are down by three at the end of the first half, 26-23 on the American Family Insurance, Brittany Shuffle by and scoreboard. Bennett, I was going to make a comment. Uh, Paxton Thompson was wearing a Lincoln Keenels jersey. Uh, I saw him earlier across the way. And then I actually saw Lincoln Keenels. Lincoln Keenels is siding here at, uh, at Riggs High School. He's sitting just behind the bench right now. <laughs> You, you got to play baseball with them. Got to play basketball with them. How much how much fun was it to, to play? How much fun is it to play with a guy like Lee Keenels, but also maybe a guy that now is at Ohio State was a quarterback playing at the Cotton Bowl last week. I mean, 
seeing him on TV last week was probably one of the cooler fan experiences I've ever had in my life because, like, I was playing high school basketball with that kid less than three years ago. And right. to, like, see him and, like, it just goes to show what, like, any small town kid from South Dakota can do. Like, if you really set your mind to something and you really want to go play football, basketball, baseball, whatever it may be at the highest level, it's not impossible. Like, as we've seen with Lincoln, it, and, and Jason Machachok, too, who's currently here tonight sitting with Lincoln, too. But, like, it's it's very possible to go to whatever your dream school may be to do whatever you want to do. So we do start the third quarter, as is Tate Schaefer on the left side to kick it over for Noel. And as Noel, that will try and drive on Dawson gets the corner for Schaefer for three. Mets the three. Crow will get called for the foul on the rebound attempt. That's going to be his third foul and a quick early foul that gives... Lincoln, a little bit of thoughts here because that's early foul trouble for Gary Crow. 27 seconds into the third quarter. You're exactly right. I mean, they, if that third foul by Crow is very big because if I'm the Govs offensively now, whoever Crow is guarding, I would I would try and attack him and see if he can maybe pick up that fourth foul and maybe get Crow out for most of the third quarter, if not if most of the rest of the third quarter, and maybe to start the fourth. The Lincoln Patriots were wanting a double dribble on Luke Olson, and I can't say I blame him for wanting the double dribble, but the referee had said that he had bobbled it, and that's the reason why he got another chance to dribble the, the basketball. And they threw it off the off the leg of the Lincoln Patriots, so Olsen will have it back here as he'll drive in. He stutter stepped in the shot rejected by Gary Crow, and it goes out of play with 7.09 to go in the fir- in the third quarter, 11 seconds on the shot clock. I mean, once again, John, I've been, I'm, I think I'm going to keep saying it all night, but Luke Olsen just consistently getting to the middle of the lane and getting an easy look for a layup it just opens up so much more for this governor's offensively and I think that maybe we talked about it at the halftime show but or during halftime but that might have been one of the reasons the Govs struggled to struggled to end the second quarter was because Olsen wasn't on the floor with foul trouble. Kate Kaiser missed the shot in close now it'll be Noel that will drive the left hand and lay it in and Noel's got his second field goal six points now for Noel and it's 28 to 23 for Lincoln. And you're right, Bennett, too, that Luke Olson, he stands at 5'11". Everybody else on the floor is over six feet tall as Zabel will drive in. That shot, to looking for a foul call, didn't get one. Crow got the rebound. But to go back to that point, Luke Olson is under six feet, but he plays above the, the, the six-foot level because he's not afraid to go against those taller guys. As Noel drives in, and then he is fouled on the other end. And the the bench for the governor is not happy with one foul not called on one end and a foul called on the other end that puts Lincoln to the uh, Lincoln Patriots to the free throw line. I mean, going back to the whole Luke Olson thing, John, I mean, you hear it on college basketball broadcasts specifically all the time, but announcers always say in college, one of the most dangerous things, one of the most dangerous things is when a guard can consistently get dribble penetration into the middle of the lane just because like I've said all all night, it just opens up so much more offensively and the defense has to scramble around to try to figure out what's going to happen next. But now Luke Olson picked up his third foul on that sequence, so he's back out of the game and will probably be out the rest of this third quarter as a free throw is made by Noel. He goes one for two on that trip, and it's 29 to 23, and the Governors have found themselves without Olson on the floor again, and they probably will be for the least of the next six minutes of game action. So this is going to be a big six minutes here for the Govs. I mean, if they can, if they can keep this this game within a possession or two when Olsen comes back in in the fourth and maybe maybe he comes back in late in the third but if he can if they can keep this within a possession or two they have a good shot to win this basketball game. Zabel drove and he is fouled but it was on the floor so no free throws and the foul will be committed by number 23 and Braxton Moore his second foul 557 to go here in the third quarter and a fresh 35 for the Governors. Right baseline inbound. Guts is wide open for three. Buries his 4-3 and the Govs have pulled back within a possession. Gets now with 12. Four threes in the ball game. 29-26. Here down by three. You know the easiest shot for a shooter, John, is a wide open one when you get your feet set. On the right side, here's Noel for three. That one just offline. Zabel gets the rebound. Gets back for Zabel as the Govs will work it in the front court and have a chance to maybe tie on this possession, down by three with 5.25 to go in the fir- third quarter. Kaiser backs it out, and he almost carried the ball, but was able to pick up his dribble. 
Now Kaiser will catch back again for Bus. Drives to the left side, the left. Spit move left side. And then the shot partially rejected. Off the hands and grabbed by the Patriots. Back for Moore who blocked the shot. Moore will drive. No look pass. That's tipped and then stolen away by the Governors. So now Pierre goes back the other way. Here's Dawson Getz. Governors want to slow things down just a little bit, but Bus got free, and he is fouled by Crow, who will pick up his fourth foul with 4.57 to go. There's the risk you take with a guy having three fouls. He picks up his fourth and will have to come out of the ball game. It will probably come out of the ball game for at least eight minutes of game time. He probably, with 4.57 to go, you probably don't see him until about four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. I would say, if I'm Coach Halseth right now for, for Sioux Falls Lincoln, I'm not very happy with Gary Crow because with, with you being already in foul trouble, and especially being the big guy, in that situation, you just got to put your hands up and try and try and contest the shot. You don't need to go for the block. As Zabel will catch the inbound pass, and then he, as he was falling out of play, he made the pass back, and it was tipped by Moore, and it's out of play. So it will be the governors that will stay with it. It's a timeout taken by the Pier Governors. It is just a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. With Spencer Kelly back at the station, Bennett Dean to my right, John Winkler here on this Thursday night. And Bennett, so far, it's a, it's a three-point game you mentioned, too. With Luke Olson out here for a while, whether it be to the end of this third quarter or maybe into the fourth quarter, Gov's got to try and keep him within a possession, then get their starters back on the floor, and Olson can go back to work and, and, and help this offense out, get the ball across midcourt. He's a catalyst, and he's a big point in this game for Pierre. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, that's what all point guards are. Like, point guards, the point guard is the catalyst of the team. And if if they can keep it within, a, like I said, a possession or two, you know, maybe have the lead, maybe tie it up, they're in a good shot to win this ball game because their shot blocker right now in Crow is on the bench with four fouls. And like you said, we probably won't see him until midway through the fourth. So out of the timeout, 33 on the shot clock, 4.55 to go in the third quarter. Inbound for Zabel, fakes the handoff back for Getz. Now he'll... Throw it low for Getz. Back to Zabel in the corner again. Governors are going to try and work it out of that corner. Zabel will start to drive. He'll take one more step high off the glass and got the shot to fall. That's a tough shot for Jed Zabel, but he's now got nine. And the Govs are within one, 29-28. on the American Family Insurance, Brittany Shuffle by the scoreboard. But, John, going back to the Crow picking up his fourth, I mean, that's a good job by Ty and Buss. I mean, like I said, like I said, shot blockers, shot blockers, which Crow is, they're always going to want to try and block the shot. And what and how to stop a shot blocker is you attack them. And busted a good job attacking attacking the hoop. Crow happened to be there, and Crow went up to try to block the shot and happened to draw the foul. Graham just missed by Lincoln. D Dawson gets missed in the other way. And now another missed shot by the Lincoln Patriots as this is able into the corner. Doyle for three in the lead. Missed the shot. Rebound fought for. We've got a tie up. And it'll be a jump ball. Cooper Twillinger and Braxton Moore going at it. And we get a tie up with 358. The Governors will keep possession in a fresh 35. You know, one of the one of the reasons why the Govs are in this game is because they've gotten a majority of the 50-50 balls. And you see it all the time at the high levels of basketball. The team that can consistently win the 50-50 balls usually has a good chance to win the game. And that's what the Govs have done tonight. Cooper Twilliger off the glass, off the inbound pass, missed the shot, gets his own rebound. The putback shot is also missed. And then Twilliger will foul on, the other, on that rebound attempt on Sam Erickson. And Twilliger had two good looks, two tough looks, and they both don't fall. And the Governors will end up picking up the foul as well. Second one on Twilliger. I mean, like you said, John, good. I mean, real two real good looks for Cooper. Just both happened to fall, but they he got another 50-50 ball. Like, he... Not only Cooper, but Jet Zabel and Sawyer Schoenstein have done a really good job of giving the Govs second, third, fourth opportunities tonight to try and score a basket or just get the ball back on defense. So now on, defense. on the left side here for the Patriots, Erickson back out to the point as he tries to cross over. Zabel step back for three. That's too strong. Rebound is fought for against three different governors and picked up by Jarofsky. And Jarofsky then is fouled as he tried to get his way out of the corner. And with 3.28 to go, the Governors will pick up their third foul of the quarter. Miles Doyle will pick up his first. And here's Kate Kaiser that will check back in for Dawson Getz. And again, no Luke Olson, probably for at least the majority of the rest of this third quarter, if not the rest of the third quarter. And no tie and bus either, who also has got two. So the Govs, the Govs are playing it smart. You know, both have their guys, or their two guards that are in foul trouble right now, both on the bench, which is smart play by Coach Beastman. Grimp just got around to Cooper Twilliger, was able to get the shot to fall off, off the glass as he got the freshman biting on that first initial shot fake. 
So it's now 31-28. Governors are down by three. Twilliger will give back for Kaiser. Zabel will slow things down as he will take one dribble to his left. Sawyer sun and shine back at the top of the key. And he will look to his right side. Cade Kaiser on the right wing. Underneath for Doyle on the right block. He'll turn to his left. Pass goes off of Twilliger. Grabbed by Zabel. Seven to go on the shot clock. Zabel drives all the way in. Shot is missed, but he is fouled. And to the free throw line will go Jet Zabel, where he is three for four so far tonight. Governors are three for five as a team. And that first foul committed by Dan DeGroote for the Patriots. You know, that's a real good, strong take there by Jet Zabel. And that's probably something that uh, he picked up in the driveway going up against Peyton and Gray a lot when he was a young kid. I should say Sam DeGroote as that free throw is made by Zabel to make it to 31-29. I don't think uh, Peyton and Gray ever took it easy on Jet. I don't think there is, and I don't know if Jet would have really liked them, liked them uh, to take it easy on him. I mean, you see, you see that with Jet out on the football field. Like Jet's a Jet's just a really tough kid, and you got to give a lot of pet or a lot of credit, excuse me, to Peyton and Gray for for toughening him up when he was a little kid. I think, uh, but but Mark I still think can take most of them. He can still take Jet. I think. I think. I think. Uh, Dad Mark can still take him off if he really wanted to. I'll say, I think if uh, I think I'd get, I'd put money on Mark to, if, if something ever happened between the four of them, I think I'd still put Mark in. Mark is the winner, or pick Mark is the winner. Tate Schaefer with an NBA range three to make it 34 30. The governors had pulled within one after Zabel went two for two from the line, but it's back to a four point lead again here for the Patriots. 34 30 with 210 to go here in the third quarter. Kaiser will catch. That was a dangerous pass from Luke Olson, who is back on the floor. Now Olson for Terwilliger, back for Zabel. Ball is tipped away and then stolen by the Patriots. So their turnover by the Governors, just their first though in the third quarter. Now get to the ball game. Patriots can extend their four point lead. Right side now here for DeGroote. Sam DeGroote to the right side. Erickson pulls up for a long three. That rattles out and Zabel will grab the rebound. 140 left to go in the third quarter. Governors down by four. I mean, Zabel. With, oh, sorry, John, what were you going to say? Go, go ahead. Oh, I, was, oh, I was just going to say, with Olsen back on the floor, like I said earlier, he's really got to be careful because you do not want Luke Olsen picking up his fourth. So on, def on defense, if I was Coach Kusler, Coach Kusler, excuse me, I would definitely say, hey, if your dude gets by you, just let him go. Like, we, we need you to on the floor, and you can't pick up your fourth. The governors had missed the shot. Luke Olsen had missed the shot. But then the rebound grab by the Patriots, stolen away by the Governors, and then Miles Doyle was able to pick it up and was fouled by Sam DeGroote, his second foul, and to the free throw line will be Miles Doyle. For the first time tonight, he's got two points, and the Governors can pull within a possession with 1.22 to go, and you're right, Bennett, that Governors and Luke Olson need to make sure that they do he, that he does not foul pick up his fourth. He's gonna be very careful as Dawson Getz will check in for Cooper Twilger. Again, 122 remaining here in the in the third quarter. We also get a sub as Edison Noel will check in for Krimjus. And I should say, John, not that Olsen should just let his defender go by if he gets by him, but he just can't be too aggressive defensively. Like he can't be going and lunging for steals or trying to, you know, trying to pick someone's pocket. But he's just got to play really sound defense, you know, keep the hands off. And if they happen to call a foul, and he does all those things, I think he's just got to live with it. Miles Doyle goes 0 for 2 from the free throw line. 34-30. Lincoln Patriots up by 4 here with 1.10 to go in the third quarter. Driving left side with the left, with the right hand on the left side is Jarowski, who's got his first bucket tonight. Jarowski's made it 36-30, and the Governors got to find a basket here, a couple baskets. They go 2 for 1 on this sequence with a 36-30 deficit. Kaiser drives all the way in. Got it right to the bucket. And with a little finger roll, Kate Kaiser's got his first points. And we'll see if the Patriots try and go two for one. There's still 44 seconds to go. It looks like they're going to take their time. The Governors would then be able to hold for the final shot as long as they don't give an offensive rebound up. There's a ball that's tipped and then taken away. And the Governors can't pretty much hold for the final shot. There is really, with less than a second between shot clock and game clock, as the Patriots have turned the ball over eight times in the ball game, three in this third quarter. Governors can pull within a possession here. Any made shot pulls into possession. Shot clock and game clock are identical right now. 13 seconds to go here in the first quarter in the third quarter. It is Luke Olson with eight seconds to go. Starts to 
drive it. Now he'll look left side. Gets will catch. He's going to start to drive all the way to the basket. Lays it in at the buzzer. And the Governor's a pull with it, too. Everybody thought Getz was going to take the three. Instead, he drove all the way in, and the Govs pull with the two, heading to the fourth quarter, 36-34. Lincoln Patriots lead by two on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Shuffle by a scoreboard. Back in a minute, you're listening here, Governor Basketball at KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, hey you. Are you in a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. As we welcome you back here, start of the fourth quarter. Peer go the peer governors are down on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shufflebine scoreboard as they're down at 36 to 34 to start this fourth quarter. Just now realized that I had the second quarter still up there the whole entire third quarter as we are underway with the goes down by two in the Lincoln Patriots with the first possession. As it is, Tate Schaefer back out. On the top of the key for Morris, he'll drive all the way in with the left hand, rolled it around, and Braxton Moore gets the bucket, his first since the second quarter. He's now got seven, and the Governors turn the ball back over on the other end, as the Govs have now turned the ball over 10 times, and then we get another turnover on Lincoln, and the foul committed by Gary Crow, who will foul out the ball game 27 seconds in to the fourth quarter. Crow's going to finish with five points tonight, picking up five fouls. And not the smart foul that you're hoping to have if you're Hall Coach Halseth. Interesting move by Halseth, by Coach Halseth, to bring Crow in the game at the start of the fourth quarter. Now, I know he's a starter. He's a senior. Like, you expect him to not pick up his fifth foul so quickly. But if I was Coach Halseth there, I probably would have sat Crow at least to start the fourth quarter because that is a huge loss for the Lincoln Patriots basically for the rest of the fourth quarter. It's not uh, not how they were hoping to start this fourth quarter. Cooper Twilliger, he was underneath the basket. The, the ball hit the bottom of the rim, and he had the English on it to get it roll over the top and in. And Twilliger's got his uh, second bucket. He's got four points tonight. Gums are back within two as Schaefer pulls up for three on the left side. Missed the shot, running rebound for Kaiser. As he gets to midcourt, Governors have a chance to tie or take the lead. Gets thinking the lead for three. That one's missed. Rebound those grabbed by Olsen. Back out for Gets. Now on the right side for Zabel still. Hands back for Olsen. The Governors can reset the offense here. 6.45 left to go in the third, fourth quarter. Governors down by two. As it is Kaiser that will fake the pass. Now throw it underneath for Twilliger. Give and go back for Kaiser. Shot is good. We are tied and a foul committed. Gums can take the lead back. Haven't had the lead since it was that spot at 22-17. Governors haven't led since then. And they now have a chance to take their lead for the first time here in the second half. And the second foul committed by Tate Schaefer. You know, John, I've always thought that the give and go was one of the most beautiful plays in basketball, and that was executed to perfection there by Terwilliger and Kaiser. I mean, I, I honestly thought Terwilliger was going to go up for the layup and back his guy down, but what a beautiful pass to, to Kaiser for the end one. The free throw was missed by Kaiser, but Terwilliger gets the offensive board, so the Governors have a chance for a bucket to give the lead. Kaiser can go for four points in this possession. Here is Zabel. Now left side. Skip pass for Olsen was nearly intercepted. Now Olsen back for Zabel inside the paint. Shot is off the glass. It falls through. And the Governors have the lead. 40 to 38. They've worked their way back in this ball game. It was just a 36-30 ball game. It is now driving it. Schaefer off the glass. Missed the shot high off the glass. To Williger with the rebound. And the Governors can now extend their two-point lead. You know, great defense there by Terwilliger. I mean, that's something that that's something that 
you don't see freshmen, especially freshman bigs, do a lot is go up and try or go up and contest a shot without fouling. That was great defense by Ky Cooper. Kaiser lost the basketball as he was driving, got too hard of a dribble, and the Govs have turned the ball over for the now 11th time. And there's a shot made, a layup good from Krampjus, and with 5:38 to go, a timeout quickly taken by Coach Halseth to make it a 40 to 40 ball game. With 5.38 remaining here in the fourth quarter. We're going to keep it here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. But at this, I mean, we were kind of expecting this type of a game. Maybe not, maybe we thought maybe a little bit more point score because it was 9 to 7 after the first quarter, but 36 34 at the end of the three, 40 to 40 now. This is the game that we we're kind of expecting. Something that's going to come down to the wire in the last 538. Hopefully, we see that through the last 538. I mean, you, you said it perfectly, John. I mean, we were talking earlier that. We we thought coming into this game that uh, it was going to be a barn burner, and what do you know? It's a barn burner. I mean, both teams just match up so well with each other, both just because of you know the physicality and the athleticism that comes from a lot of these guys playing football. But I mean, we we thought this how this game was going to go, and you know, like you said, maybe there was going to be more points, or at least we thought there was going to be more points. But you know, you can't ask for much better than a than a close game down the stretch for basketball. Game. So that was, I believe, the first timeout taken by Coach Hall, Seth of Lincoln, as Kate Kaiser trying to find somebody in the bound ball, in the bound the ball to, and he turned it over. It was intercepted by Edison Knoll, and the Governors have turned the ball back over again. Now as Zabel will have it back, Luke Olson, Governors down by two now. Olson pump fakes, kicks it back over for Kaiser. Now the top of the key for Zabel, he will travel and turn it over. The Governors turn the ball over now four times in this fourth quarter already, and have turned the ball over in total. A, 13 times a night. You know, Lincoln Lincoln sped up here, there, right there, and uh, forced forced two turnovers. And you no, know, and I think that might might have been a point of emphasis for Coach Halseth in that last timeout was try and speed up the game a little bit, force a few turnovers, and let's let's try and extend this lead for the Lincoln Patriots. And the one thing too that you, you can try and use, and the crowd's been a great crowd tonight. Sometimes the crowd gets a little bit antsy in a close game as there's a wide open three from Edison Knoll that will miss and the rebound will be grabbed eventually by a jump ball by three different players, two Patriots and Jet Zabel for the Governors. But when the crowd gets a little bit antsy, sometimes it speeds the home child crowd up too. And you can fuel a little bit of the home team sometimes getting sucked in by the crowd by what, what they're doing, uh, by how they're, they're kind of a little antsy. So the Governors want to keep their pace calm as well and not give in to what the crowd might be doing because they're they're excited and everybody's excited about how this game is going right now. I mean, especially too, anytime, if you're a pure fan, anytime you can beat a Sioux Falls school or team in anything, it's always a great feeling. And like you said, the crowd, the crowd's a little antsy tonight. And, and th there's the Lincoln crowd that's going to be on the, the back of the official right now. Braxton Moore is going to get called for a push. And the Lincoln crowd erupted. It's on the opposite end of the floor from where they're sitting at. And more with a push on Kaiser, kind of bumping him out of bounds. And there, there's the other side of the crowd getting into this game when there's any call that's being made. You know, I, I, not trying to be biased, John, but I thought that was a pretty good call. I mean, you could clearly see that Kaiser was trying to drive baseline. And uh, you, could, you could see pretty clearly that he was getting, uh, he got shoved or got fouled in some sort of way. Cooper Twilger nearly traveled. The fans for the Patriots were hoping for a travel call, but they didn't get the ball anyway. Now Noel will drive, and he is fouled. And to the free throw line will go the Patriots, and that one was on Cooper Twilger, his third. And the governor's got to find a little bit of a breath here, find a basket. They're down by two. They're, there's still plenty of time, 440 to go, but Easton Noel, I make that Edison Noel, who is three for four from the free throw line, will step to the line where he misses the first free throw. It's a big miss because now, even if he makes the second one, it still stays at a one possession game. He's probably the guy that you don't want to foul at the end of this ball game because he is three for five and the Patriots are four for 11 as a team. So he's been the guy as he makes down another free throw to make it 43-40. He's the kind of the guy, he's the only guy that's been consistent for the free throw line for the Patriots. You know, and this is a big, this is a big spot for the Gubs because the, the Patriots' two most athletic guys in Smith and Schaefer are on the bench right now. So if I'm Pierre, you really got to take advantage in this probably limited time you have Schaefer and Smith on the bench. It is Kaiser on the right wing here for the Governors as he starts to drive, nearly lost his footing. We'll get the pass back to Olsen with now with eight seconds to go on the 
shot clock. Olsen starts to drive, nearly lost his footing as well. His shot is offline as he was able to regain his balance, and the rebound is going to be grabbed by the Patriots. Four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Governors are down by three, 43 to 40. Both teams still have plenty of timeouts to go. Governors have taken two. The Patriots have taken just one. It's a big defensive possession here for Pierre because if you can get a stop. As they almost got the stop, they will get the missed shot by uh, Isaac Jarofsky as the Patriots nearly turned the ball over. And now the Governors will take one of their timeouts here with 3.38 to go in the fourth quarter. So the Governors down by three. 43-40 on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Shuffle by the scoreboard. 3.38 to go in the fourth. We will step aside for 30 seconds. You listen to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose Bank West. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. As we welcome you back here, the Pier Governors, they are down by three, 43 to 40 on the American Family Insurance pretty shuffle by a scoreboard as we John Winkler alongside Bennett Dean and Bennett this this is it every possession becomes a little bit more important now the governors you, you're not winning the ball game with this possession but you certainly won't, don't want to have any more empty possessions the rest of the way I mean that was a huge defensive stop before that timeout called by coach Kusler because like you said the clock is starting it's not at that point yet but the clock's slowly starting to creep towards not being your friend anymore and that was a huge stop because if Lincoln had scored on that last possession it would have made it a two possession game and it probably, it's not impossible, obviously, because in the game of basketball. Here's Gens for three to tie it. He buries it. We are tied at 43. That's how not impossible it is. It is yeah. quickly possible for the Governors to get right back in it. But what I, what I was going to say was it becomes a little bit tougher to try and come back because the clock's, the clock's going to start ticking off here soon, and you need uh, you need all the stops and all the all the buckets you need or all the buckets you can get. Here is Ono in the corner as he will pull up for three in the corner. That one's missed, and the Governors will get the rebound. Zabel will sky forward, and Pierre has a chance to take the lead on the other end of the floor. Guess has got four threes, make that five threes tonight. 17 points, 19 points overall for Dawson Getz. Luke Olsen to the left side for Getz, who has just tied the game up to a cutting Zabel on the left side. Off the glass, missed the shot, gets his rebound, falling away, gets the bucket to fall. And Jet Zabel has given the Govs a 45-43 lead. Quick 5-0 spurt for the Govs. They lead it by two. And now this becomes a huge defensive possession for the Govs because if you can get a stop here, the clock now becomes your friend. And you, it, can, you can run 30, 30, 35 seconds off the shot clock. It does become your friend because the Govs do get the defense to stop. Moore missed the shot. Rebound came to Pierre. The pass was off the hand and out of play. So now Pierre will keep possession here. 45-43, 2.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. So they do have 33 on the shot clock, but they can take 30 seconds or so off the clock and still try and get a good shot as Kate Kaiser will inbound and that was a big 5-0 spurt for the Govs because one half of the Smith-Schaefer duo for Lincoln's now in the game. And so that was a big... As it, it is against the Governors had to scramble. They were able to get that, to keep the possession of that ball. And what do you know, John? The Pier Govs come away with another 50-50 basketball. Olsen for three, buries it! Luke Olsen, his first three of the ball game. Five points tonight, the Govs lead it by five. 8-0 run for Pier, 150 to go in the fourth quarter. John, I don't know if you, how much college basketball you've watched this year, but one player that Luke Olsen reminds me a ton of is Kentucky's Reed Shepard. Never, never, he's always under control. Great shooter, great decision maker. Just an all-around complete basketball player. The next shot by the Patriots was missed. It goes off of the Patriots and a play. The goes with 144 to go, have a five-point lead. Lincoln has fouled three times, so they need to foul just once more to get themselves two more fouls to get the Governors to the free throw line. As Zabel will get across midcourt, the Governors can take their time here. And there's one foul committed, 135 to go. And for Pierre, 
right now, if you if you take the entire shot clock to get a shot away, puts you down to a minute. As that's the fourth foul on Braxton Moore. So another starter that is in foul trouble with only 95 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And I would say, now now if you're Sioux Falls Lincoln, you probably got to start start looking to foul a little bit. And if you're if you're Sioux Falls Lincoln, the guy you probably don't want to foul is Luke Olson. I would, am I, I'm assuming I'd be correct there. Yeah, I, I think Luke Olson is definitely the guy that you don't want to want to foul. As Kate Kaiser is going to get some blood taken off of his arm, and Coach Kusler will take a timeout. I think because of the blood that Kaiser had to get taped up, he would have had to come out of the game. But now with the timeout taken by Coach Kusler, you can keep him in the ball game with 135 to go, and that's that's a huge. I mean. Where Coach Kusler has these timeouts available, that's a huge timeout to take to keep Kaiser in the ball game. Oh, absolutely! Because now, now you have your starting quarterback from your football team in the game. So if you need to maybe throw a deep ball or some guy that you know that you can trust to inbound the basketball, because now you don't want to turn the ball over if you're the Guffs. So with Cade still being able to stay in the game, it allows you to have confidence in a guy to take out the ball, and you know who's not going to turn the ball over. So the Pier Governors with 135 coming out of the timeouts have a chance with another bucket to try and ice the ball game. Still probably won't ice it even with the main three to make it an eight point game. There's still plenty of time to go, but it would be make things a lot easier for the Governors to hold on to a win if you can make a big shot on this possession. Inbound pass from Kaiser. Olsen catches it without much con contest. It is now Olsen. He's got to find, got the separation. Break the five count. Now the pass goes over for Kaiser. Governors are going to take as much time off this shot clock as they possibly can. Olsen, again, the five-second count starts as he starts to drive to his left side. He's going to find somebody to pass it to. Backdoor feed for yes, but the shot is rejected off the backboard. Pass will come back for Zabel with seven seconds to go. Kaiser's got to get a shot away. Olsen down to three seconds. Half-court shot by Olsen. is off the back rim. Rebound by Kaiser. Governors will work it back out. Now the Patriots are going to have to foul soon. Olsen, he is fouled with 52.6 to go. What a huge offensive board by Kate Kaiser. And what do you know, John? Another 50-50 ball going the Govs' way. It's it's been incredible to see tonight that they have they see it seems like every 50-50 ball on the floor in the air it, it's gone the way of the Govs and that's a huge reason why they're up five with less than a minute to go. And Luke Olson to the free throw line. Governors are five for nine, five for ten for the free throw line, make it six for eleven as Olson knocks down the first free throw attempt, makes it a six point game, 52.6 to go here in the fourth quarter. And John, do you think? Do you think I'm a little crazy for thinking when Luke chucked up that half-court shot that from here it looked like it might have gone in? <laughs> it looked good. I, I, there's not too many times where you put up a half-court shot and you say, that's a good shot selection. Luke Olsen says it looked like a pretty good so shot selection. And like, the second free throw is good for Olsen. Like when he when he released that, I was like, there's no way that's going in. And as it got closer, I was like, this might have a chance. But, you know, Gus came away with a huge old board there. Seven-point lead. There's a big three taken, missed, rebound, grabbed by the Governor's Luke Olson. Kate Kaiser back for Olson. Governor's need to get across half court, but they are fouled with 36.9 to go. And it looks like the Pier Governors are going to come away with a victory here with one second between shot clock and game clock. Olson back to the free throw line. He's been a catalyst, as we mentioned earlier. He's got a chance to seal this as he's picked up now seven points in the ballgame. I mean, that's exactly you took the words right out of my mouth, John. I mean, if Olsen can make both of these, it's the game's all but over because it now becomes a three, at least at least a three possession game for Lincoln with, you know, 35 ish seconds left to go on the clock. It just becomes really, really difficult if you're the Lincoln Patriots to try and come back and win this. Olsen makes the first free throw. Governors are three for their last three. Olsen is three for his last three on the free throw line. He will miss that fourth free throw. Now there's Jinx. It stays an eight-point game. It's still a shot here for the Lincoln Patriots, although there's a foul committed by Dawson Guest. Just the second team foul. So the Governors, they have a chance, they have an opportunity, especially if you're Dawson Guest who you picked up your first foul. You can kind of slow the pace down a little bit because you've got another two fouls to give before you put them at the free throw line. So nothing got to be too easy, can be too easy here. 
This will be Braxton Moore driving in, kicks it over, right side, Noel for a three. They got to have it, don't get it. Rebounds tipped around. It's going to be grabbed by Kaiser. He works into the front court with 20 seconds to go, and they will foul maybe one more time with 17.8. Kaiser to the free throw line. The Governors are all but victors to go to 5-2 and two in the season, and this is a huge win for the Pure Governors against a team that coming in the season I mean, they got they were in the third place game last year in the state uh, in the state tournament. Coming in the season, they were a team that was pretty high on w where they might be going this season. Kate Kaiser makes the first free throw, and for the Governors who had a lot of question marks because everybody was graduating, you're bringing back Luke Olson and Kate Kaiser. Jet Zabel hadn't played since his sophomore year. All these question marks. The governors are answering a lot of questions once again here tonight. I mean, this is a this is going to be a huge, massive win for Pierre because. I believe coming into the day, they were the 11 seed and Lincoln was the four. So this is going to be a huge win. A big three, a timeout taken with seven seconds to go as Tate Schaefer will hit a uh, off balance three to make it a six point game. The governors just need to inbound it here, but continue on that thought better. Well, I mean, I was just going to say like, this is a massive, massive statement win for the Govs because coming into the day, they were the 11 seed. Lincoln, Sioux Falls Lincoln was the four seed. So this is not only going to boost them in terms of seed points and standings, but this is also going to send a message to the rest of the state that this pure governor team is for real, John. I mean, they can they can compete with pretty much anyone on any given night. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they get Washington on Saturday on the road. That's another good contest. The, the Warriors are above them in the standings as well. They're three and three. They were number nine uh, in the standings coming into the day. And that's where the if the Govs can get that win, and then winner coming up on Tuesday. We, we kind of talked about it. We did. We briefly mentioned it, how important that game is going to be to get a win, and that's because the Class A opponent, you get a win, you're probably going to get 50 points out of that win. 39 if you lose, but, boy, a 50-point win goes a really long way at the end of the season. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, and even if, even in this three-game stretch between Sioux Falls Lincoln, Sioux Falls Washington, and winner, if the Govs can somehow manage a way to go 2-1, and one, you know, obviously, they'd obviously like to go 3-0. I mean, who wouldn't like to go 3-0 in this stretch? But if they can come away at least 2-1 and one in this stretch, they got to feel good about themselves going into the end of the back half of the season. So now a 7.6 to go. The Governors will inbound. Zabel will inbound it for Olsen, who will be fouled with six seconds remaining. Coach Hall said thought he had a tie-up, which would have kept the possession in favor of the uh, Lincoln Patriots. But it will be Luke Olson to the free throw line, who is three for four so far tonight. As he's got eight points, he can still get to double digits with eight of his 10 points coming in the fourth quarter. I'll say coming into tonight, John, Olson was shooting 79% from the line. So probably the guy, if you're peer, who you want at the line, and if you're Sioux Falls Lincoln, probably the guy you would absolutely not like to see at the free throw line. The governors are four for eight from the line here in the fourth quarter. Overall, nine for 17 from the line as Olsen does miss the first one, but all Pierre has to do is just make sure they don't foul any time on the other way in. But the offensive rebound off the miss, it will end the ball game. Olsen will stand with it. Governors, huge win tonight, 52-46 over the Lincoln Patriots. The final here at Rex High School. We will step aside. For two minutes, make that three minutes. We'll come back in three minutes to wrap this one up from Rick High School. You listen to Pure Governor Basketball at KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Ah, uh, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Whoa, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Ah! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 college! Last nineteen ninety five. When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Now is the time to purchase your new Ford from Capital City Ford, Lincoln, Toyota, and Pier. With 0% financing available on the Ford Edge, $1,000 Ford to Ford trade-in assistance, $2,000 off all Ford F-150s with 90 days of the first payment. Stop in today or shop our extensive inventory from home at CapitalCityFordToyota.com. Count on us for your service needs, also with convenient scheduling and in-stock parts. Buy your Ford today from Capital City Ford, Lincoln, Toyota, 518 East Sioux Ave, Pier, South Dakota. 
Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important. And Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pierre, proud to support high school athletics. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic bill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Oahe Federal Credit Union. When you're looking for quality trash pickup services, look no further than Envirotech. Six days a week, their trucks are on the road picking up trash, even holidays. They're also the place to contact for recycling services. Their friendly, professional staff is ready to assist with weekly pickups or even special pickups. Check out the website at envirotechwaste.com. Envirotech is locally operated. Call 224-4804. Envirotech Waste Services in Pier. Proud to support high school athletics. As we welcome you back here, the Pier Governors, they pick up a 52-46 win over the Lincoln Patriots here tonight. John Wickler alongside Ben and Dean will hear from Coach Brianna Kusler coming up in just a little bit. But the Gals pick up a, a big win tonight, 52-46. And, and Bennett, that's a that's a big win. That is a huge win for this Governor squad to, to get to 5-2, and two, come back from a from a three-point deficit at halftime. They were down by two in the other third quarter and, and pick up that win. A character win and a signature win for the governors here in early January. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, like we talked about during the halftime show, the last a minute and a half to two minutes of the second quarter was not the finest moment for the Gubs. But to show the resilience, to come back from down half, to get a six-point win at home in front of this great crowd tonight we had at Riggs, I mean, it like you said, it's a character win. It's not only a character win, but it also shows the rest of the state specifically double a that the, on any given night this pure team is legit and they are i think this definitely puts them in consideration for the state tournament like that's a that's a massive massive win we're gonna hand the the microphone first to uh jed zabel i won't put jed zabel on the camera himself we'll also talk with miles doyle uh but uh jet we'll, we'll start with you here big win uh, how how good of a win does that feel for the for this pure governor squad Feels good, you know, we all played hard. You kind of fought our hearts out there, and it just feels good. That's going to be a big one coming to end the stretch with power points. You know, Jet, uh, one of the things I mentioned to John on the broadcast tonight was the, the amount of 50-50 balls you got. Was that kind of a big emphasis in practice was, you know, rebounding the basketball? Yeah, you know, it's just a big emphasis with that. Uh, it's kind of our identity. We're trying to make 50-50 balls, rebounding and defense our identity. And it's kind of happening right now, as you can see, you know, we try to play, be that nitty-gritty team and not let them uh, get uh, second-chance possessions and just ultimately try to win every uh, point. Well, you guys were down by two. It was a struggle to, to get points in the first quarter. Got a little bit better in the second quarter and started to really come along. Uh, what was the message at halftime, especially when you guys had that 22-17 lead, end up being down 26-23? What was the message that kind of settled you guys down and get you going in the third quarter? I think it's just play our basketball. You know, they're trying to speed us up, trying to get us out of our rhythm, and they did that overall. I think if we just play our basketball and play uh, hard-nosed basketball and not let little mistakes compound, I think we should be good in the long run. Well, you got 15 points tonight right, right, right at your average. Uh, obviously a guy that uh, you, you're, you're a guy that they kind of look at, football, baseball, every sport that you play, you're kind of a guy that they look at. To be able to score that, be able to get the rebounds that you have been able to, how, how good is it to, to contribute that way for the team but also be a leader on and off the court? 
feels good, you know. Just uh, um, just being that guy now. I sat out last season, kind of had to soak everything in, just how much I enjoy the game. And I just kind of found a love for it back then. You know, I wasn't really liking it. Then after last year, I found a love, and I just kind of uh, just felt like scoring sometimes, and I just did. <laughs> you know, you know, you Jet, ahead. I was just going to ask, like, how much of a factor did this great crowd we had tonight, Riggs, play a factor in you guys' comeback? I think it was really big. You know, all, all of our energies were uh, risen, and I think just with all the student section and everyone just coming out and supporting us, just felt good to kind of be in a huge home crowd, and I think it led us to victory. Well, you, you got interviewed by me several times in football. What's it like to be interviewed by a former teammate? Feels good. Feels, feels good. good I, I would say it probably feels even better after a win. Uh, yeah. Real quick, too, Washington coming up on Saturday. What do you expect from them? Um, I expect a hard-nosed uh, game, and we just got to stay within ourselves and do what we do best, and I think we should be able to be, come out with the W. Well, congrats on the win, Jet, uh, and good luck on Saturday against Washington. Thank you. That is Jet Zabel. We'll, we'll turn the mic over, uh, microphone over here to now Miles Doyle. And, Miles, a hard-fought win. Uh, w what's that feel like? Obviously, we talked to Jet just a little bit ago. What's that feel like to get that, to it, get it that win? It feels amazing. It's just awesome. This team works hard every day, in and out, and it just feels it's awesome. You know, Miles, you hit, you had a couple of huge shots tonight, played some great defense. You know, what What have you, I don't know, I can't think of a question right now. Johnny, you, need to, you might need to ask another one. Well, so, uh, Miles, you end up with uh, two points tonight to get that bucket, uh, but obviously a couple of big defensive stops. Defensively, what did you guys want to do against this Patriot team? Because they were moving up and down the floor. You guys were staying with them, but how... What was the key to get those defensive stops? Yeah, so our goal was to stop the shooters and also stop the drive, and we're just trying to play as much, help each other out, and just try to get anything we can. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, John, like you guys said, John, or like, like John said, excuse me, I mean, you guys did a great job on the shooters tonight, and especially Tate Schaefer. I mean, coming into the game, John and I talked about, but I'm assuming he was kind of the guy on the scouting report where you guys were like, if we if we shut him down or at least limit him, he we have a chance to win this game. Is that correct? Yes, yes. That guy hit like six threes last year in a row on us. He got super hot, so we had to make sure we shut him down off the gate. Well, you, you, you talked with Jed too. You guys are down by uh, three at halftime. Had that five point lead down by three. Kind of started to move things back in in that way, but never really got the lead back till late in the third quarter. When you got that lead, did you feel the tide turn? Did you feel the crowd kind of help you guys yeah, tie that turn? The crowd was definitely into it. It was just awesome. We, everyone was pumping each other up. We were all encouraging each other, celebrating every little thing. So. Just, yep, doing what we can. So now going into Washington, uh, what's kind of the scouting report? Uh, you're probably going to get more of it tomorrow, yeah. getting ready for Saturday, but what do you kind of expect so from that? So it's going to be tough. They're in Sioux Falls, playing in the Metro schools. It's always tough, but if we can get a win there, it's even better. Do, do you do you ever stop smiling, by the way? Never. 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 <laughs> well, Miles. I, I, got, I got one last okay. question for Miles, but uh, Miles, John and I kind of talked about it tonight on the broadcast, and being, a, being as good of a shooter as you are, you know, how important is it to, you know, see that kind of first one go in and, you know, not only if it's, you know, coming off the dribble on the catch, like how important is it to see that first one go in and, you know, kind of raise the confidence for yourself? It's amazing. It just boosts your confidence 100 percent. It pretty much just like boosts everything you do. It just gets you in the zone. Just gets you hyped up to play. Well, and, back in. and now how much does this kind of boost the confidence of this team to get a, to get a win like this, not just against anybody, but a Lincoln Patriot team, a, a way you guys were able to get this win. How much does that do you feel that's going to boost the confidence? I think the it's huge. It boosts us a ton. We know that we can beat a Metro team now. And often, obviously, it's the first one we played. So got five more on the road or like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, well, it, it, you get a tough test on Saturday against Washington. It's going to be a, be a good contest, and uh, good luck on Saturday. Yeah. Congrats on the win tonight. Thank you. That is Miles Doyle as the Governors pick up a 52-46 to 46 win here this evening over the Lincoln Patriots. John Wickler alongside Bennett Dean as we go through some of the totals. We uh, will, I, I think... What's fun, too, is we get a chance to talk to some of the guys, so we probably won't talk with Coach Gooser. She might come up here still, but either way, we'll, we'll, we talk with Jed Zay. We'll talk with Miles Doyle, uh, but we'll go through the stats here real quick for the Lincoln Patriots, who are led by Tate Schaefer, who did have four threes in the ball game, finished with 12 points, 10 for Edison Knowles. Those two guys had double figures. Seven points for Braxton Moore, six for Sam Erickson, five for Gary Crow, and a two for Isaac Jarofsky and Luke Kremchus as the uh, Patriots shot 5 of 12 from the free throw line, turned the ball over in total nine times tonight and the Governors uh, pick up that 52-46 win. On the Governors side, the victorious side, 
15 points for Jed Zabel, but it was the game high 17 for Dawson Getz, who had five threes in the ball game, and another uh, another deuce to make it 17 points for him. Those two were in double figures. Luke Olson finished with eight, with six of his eight coming in the fourth quarter. Big three for the Governors, and went three for six from the free throw line, and uh, ended up being five points for Kate Kaiser, four for Cooper Twilliger. Two for Miles Doyle and one for Ty and Buss. As the Govs, though, they did turn the ball over 14 times and four in that fourth quarter, but they shot nine of 18, four of nine for the free throw line in the fourth quarter, but nine of 18 in total. And the Govs pick up the uh, win over the Lincoln Patriots 52 46. So, Bennett, big win for the Governors. Uh, your final thoughts here as we start to wrap up the broadcast. Your final thoughts on this big win here for Pierre? You know, I came away really impressed tonight. I mean, like I said before before tip-off, I haven't gotten the chance to watch the Govs a ton this year, but I came away really impressed. I mean, I kind of expected this team, just from knowing the guys a little bit, to be, you know, a physical, defensive first team. But I came away impressed tonight with how, you know, evenly the scoring distribution was. I mean, this might be one of those teams where, it, it might be a guy like whoever's hot might be might end up being your leading scorer. Like it's not going to be, you know, a situation like last year where you kind of expected, you know, a Lincoln, a Jackson, or a Ben Heisler to be your leading scorer. Like, you know, Dawson Getz had had how many? Seventeen points. Seventeen. Yep. Dawson Getz had seventeen tonight. Jet had fifteen. Like Luke Olson's shown that he can he can go off and get get buckets in a variety of ways. So like this is going to be a very dangerous team because there's not really one guy on the scouting report that you can circle and be like, okay, like. We have to contain him. It's it's got to be a team like when you're playing the Scuffs team. It's got to be a team, collective defensive effort. Well, the governors they, they get that collective defensive effort. They get this scoring from this uh, Pier Governor squad to pick up a 52-46 win in a hard fought game tonight. A fun game here at Riggs High School as the Govs move to five and two in the season and will take on the Washington Warriors on Saturday uh, coming up on the road. They will both teams will tip off at two o'clock. Girls will be at home. The the boys will be on the road. It's a two o'clock tip off uh, here on uh, or uh, here at Riggs High School and also at Washington High School as the Govs will be looking for wins. Both the girls and the boys will be looking for wins and both trying to get to six and two on the season. Well, our next broadcast will be hockey coming up next, uh, coming up this Saturday. The Governors, uh, the Capitals will be on the road to Sioux Center. We'll have coverage starting around four o'clock and uh, kick off and kick off and uh, puck drop at four thirty. Uh, then on Sunday, we'll also have the Capitals with uh, puck drop. This over on Capital City Rock, puck drop at eleven forty-five. We got SDSU. I know Bennett, you're very ready for that game. That's a Sunday one o'clock kickoff. We'll have coverage at twelve thirty. Uh, on KCCR, so we're looking forward to a, a plenty. We've got college basketball, we've got the NFL on Saturday, and of course, SDSU on Sunday for the FCS National Championship. Final score prediction for Sunday. You know, with me going to SDSU, I don't want to make it, like, too bad, but I'm going to say... I'm going to say 38-14 Rabbits. I think this is... This SDSU team is, you know, proven throughout the entire year in the last two years that I, I just don't know if there's a team on the FCS level that can that can compete with them, you know, top to bottom roster wise. And I just think I think it's going to be a game where they just pound Montana in the ground, and you know, Davis has Isaiah Davis has some huge runs, and Gronowski makes some timely plays, and they kind of just roll. So I'm going to go with 38, 14 Rabbits. Well, uh, Spencer Kelly is not uh, who's running our game tonight. Not uh, have he said that's very modest of you uh, to be going with the 38, 14. <laughs> I mean, SDSU. It's a it's a national championship game. I mean, the juices are going to be flowing for both sides. Like, you know, Montana's a really good team. Like, there's a reason they were the number two seed in the FCS playoffs. So, like, you gotta you gotta respect what Montana brings. But, you know, I just think I think the rabbits are going to be too much. I, I I would go with you as well. I think SDSU's got going to have the win on on Sunday. But you can hear it on KCCR with coverage at 12:30 and a kickoff at one o'clock. On, on KCCR as the Govs will take on, or make the, the Rabbits, the Jackrabbits will take on the Montana Grizzlies on Sunday. The Governors will take on Washington on Saturday. We want to say thanks to Spencer Kelly back at the station. For Bennett Dean, John Winkler here signing off. Pure Governors win at 52-46 of the Lincoln Patriots as we say goodnight from Ricks High School. You've been listening to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Pure Governor Basketball is sponsored by Rising Hope Counseling, Bank West, Fisher Rounds, Billion Auto, AGE, Envirotech, Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota, 
American Family Insurance, Brittany Scheffelbein Agency, River Bottom Sanitation, CHS River Plains, Wheelhouse Auto Body, Edward Jones Financial, Allied Plumbing and Heating, Farting Electric, Gales Gas, First Dakota National Bank, Faith Lutheran, Lamb Motors, Shane's Pharmacy, B&B Equipment, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Anderson Rumsa Dental, Todd's Electric, Graham Tire, Avera, and the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General Division of Consumer Protection. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports, Central South Dakota's sports leader.